Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here, and today I'm not gonna talk about your favorite topic, or maybe not, CSS in JS. By the end of this presentation, I would like you to better understand how React server components are shaking the space, how the challenges are with the current generation of library in this space, and some of the key properties I think you should look out from a great styling solution. Now, the, shake, the space may be shaken, but there is hope. I'm also going to introduce Pigment CSS, which I believe in this part of this next generation of CSS and JS libraries. And let's start into it. So I would like to start with two quick questions for the audience. So please raise your hands. Who here is currently depending on emotion or style components? Whew, okay, so I see maybe 50%, 45% of the audience, maybe a little less. And a spicier, well, hold on. So you guys seem to be a good sample of the ecosystem. So if you look at the last state of CSS survey, you will find that about 50, 60% of the ecosystem actually also depend on, on these libraries like you. And no, last question, and a spicier one. Who here feels left behind by these libraries and is considering migrating away? So please, again, raise your hands. Maybe I see half of the people that raised their hand initially. So if you look at the same survey, you also find that since a year or two years ago has been a, like an ongoing decline in interest in style, component, and emotion. And also, I mean, on the opposite side of the spectrum, you'll find maybe, for instance, CSS modules that grew in interest. So what is going on here, right? So I won't be able to give you a definitive answer, but at MUI, we have experienced similar challenges. And so for those that don't know me, I'm Olivier, and I co-created Material UI a long time ago, and I'm now running MUI as its CEO. And so how is this relevant? So at MUI, we maintain a few open source projects. You will find Base UI, which is a library of headless components, meaning unstyled. Then you will find Material UI, which is a popular UI library extending Base UI that implement material design principles. And on top of these two, we have MUX, which brings advanced components like data grid charts, that picker, and so on. And lastly, we have Toolpad, which is a set of components to quickly build internal tools. So how is this relevant? So the common denominator between all of these projects, one way or another, for instance, in base UI, we only use emotion for the docs, um, is the reliance on, on emotion. And that gives us a good exposure to the problem. So the first thing you're going to see is bundle size. So when you install style components, you subscribe by default to 11 kilobytes of JavaScript, plus four, five, depending like on the theme object that you need to carry around in your application. So in total, it's like 60 kilobytes, which is about a third of the bundle size of React in the bundle. So it's not the end of the world, but you still have to ask yourself, is this really needed? Like, do I need to carry this around? And the second one, performance issue, I think this one is a larger hit, is with the, the runtime impact. So here you can see the time it takes to render 1,000 rows of table with CSS modules, Material UI v4, and Material UI v5. And you can see that in v5 we use Emotion, in v4 we use GSS, and CSS module is much faster. There's like a significant cost here. So you can't really effectively use Emotion without virtualization for these use cases. Now, let's say you still add virtualization. So this is our data grid rendering 100,000 rows with CPU throttling enabled. You can still see blank screens. So what's going on here, right? So if you look at the flame graph or like the, the timeline performance, you will find that about 14% of the time is spent re rendering again and again and generating the same emotion styles. And so in theory, you could have 15% less blank screens. And I think if you use these components for analytic use cases, that matters. You really want to solve that. And if that wasn't enough, we also hear this from you. Um, here's a user that is loving to use the ESX props, but is struggling with the performance of it. So that was for performance. The more recent challenge is with the React server components, where today, nor emotion or style components are compatible with it. And the key blocker for them is the context API that is not available on the server, or maybe, I don't know, yet, or maybe ever. And there's also a possible walk-around with the cache API, but we don't really see movement happening there, so it, we are stuck there. So this problem felt too, too important for us not to do something about it. And this is what we started to do at MUI about a year ago. And I would like to cover how we approach this. So the first thing you could do is look at solutions, but there is an overwhelming amount of them. You'll find inline style CSS modules, Stylix, Tailwind CSS, Linaria, Panda CSS, I mean, and so on. So on the, what we can do on the other side is just look at the key properties I think we should have, right? But before I dive in, I would like to like raise a disclaimer. So I'm looking at those from the perspective of my own context and the perspective of Material UI. So these solutions have trade-offs and they have context where they are best. 
So the very first thing I think we need is style collocation, meaning having the style and in the same file as the HTML. And I think that's bring, that this brings great benefit. It minimizes context shifting. It, you don't have to name everything. And it also means that because the things are more closely related in the same file, you, can have, you have access to more dynamic logic with JavaScript. And for those that truly want separation of concerns, they can still do it. Like it it's not the end of the day. They can move this to a separate file. So in that context, CSS modules, isn't that great? So it would be great if we don't have to use it. And I think for me, like a second key dimension to look at is are you going to use atomic classes or not? So lately, we have seen a merge, and I'm in a trend of more atomic classes-based solutions emerging in the ecosystem. And these are very interesting because it means that for, for um, small and medium-sized applications, you can keep a single CSS file without Explode, I mean, while keeping the performance fast enough. And this is really like much simpler. No, it's not all bright. I feel like you also have a cons and the downside with the debugging experience. So here, for instance, you can see that in the, in the dev tool, the, on the right side, you might see like style are heavy to, to look at, and the left side, a DOM that is also harder to inspect. So for me, the best user experience was the one we used to have in Matter UI v4, where we could simply look at the DOM and see very clearly how the style are structured and inherits, and then you, from there you can customize. So I talked about medium size application, but what about large one? So I think like, atomic classes works for large applications as well, but as a very like, significant condition, which is you don't use nested selectors, or at least you, you use and you keep them very much in check, otherwise it completely breaks down. But I believe like nested selectors have nice use cases, so I, I, I want to still be able to use them at scale. So to scale the application, I believe that even with atomic classes, you need to have granular style loading. And by, what I mean by this is only loading the CSS that you, of the component that are on, on the page. But once you get, you get granular style loading, do you still need atomic classes as much, right? So you don't really have to trust me. You can also trust Sebastian Mark Begg, which is the former React Tech lead on the team. And here's a quote like, highlighting the need for why you need granular style loading. You can rewatch this after my talk. So if you look at the space here, there's basically two kind of solutions. I think if you look at emotion style components, CSS modules, Linaria, they are like great story in terms of code splitting. Um, but if you look at the more recent atomic classes solution emerging, it, it's, it's harder. At least today, they don't have this built in. And I think for me, another key dimension is familiarity. Do I have to learn a new API? Or can I rely on my existing CSS knowledge? Like I, would, I don't want to have to learn a, sh a shit shit. Maybe I'm a designer, or maybe I have like limited bandwidth for in my memory. So, and the last dimension for us, which I think has been the most, um, let's say, structuring has been backward compatibility. We've experienced firsthand when moving from GSS to Emotion in V5, how painful it was for the community to migrate. So, what if the solution we were coming for only had to replace imports? Wouldn't that be amazing? And I think, honestly, the style components is just fine. So what do we do from there? I think this is where Pigment CSS steps in. It's a new CSS in JS library that we have been working at MUI for the last 12 months. No, I know what you're thinking. You're Oops, sorry. Not not another one? Need the audio. <laughs> you're joking. Not another one? Oh, right? for God's sake, I can't honestly. There's so many of these. <laughs> so why are we doing this, right? Like, could just, just use an existing libraries? And maybe not, we'll see. So I think what's very interesting for us to do is, is map the space. If you take on one side how costly the migration is, and on the other side axis, you, dis you plot how much we rely on the bundler and how much we are close to CSS, you will probably find this space. Um, and like, that's what I think how the solution like, already displays themselves. So today, if you start from emotion, which I think a huge chunk of the community is at, you effectively have two possible directions to take. You can either go into the CSS modules or the Tailwind CSS path at the cost of a, a costly migration, and you have to give up on some of the properties I talked about before, so either style collocation or granular style loading. Or you can go the other direction and go with the more recent library like Stylix or Panda CSS and more older Linaria. Um, but then you still have these custom migrations, and they usually also don't go as much as they could into like a deep bundler integration. So our thought was, and you've seen this released yes, yesterday with the React compiler that opens the door for deeper bundler integration. What if we were actually to go down that path of up to Rust integration? 
um, would not that be kind of something that we deliver? And we basically, we, have never, we haven't seen anyone going there. So that has been our trade-off and our, our bet with Spigman CSS is what will happen if we actually go and explore that space? And so if you, if you add Pigment CSS to the, to the chart, that's where it, it lands more or less. So how does it look like? Well, it's pretty much the same as Emotion. You might find an extra property feature, which is the SX prop that works on also native elements, which I think is very interesting when you really want to quickly iterate and prototype. Some of the key design uh, decisions we have there, we wanted to have no runtime, but still with a fallback because we don't want, they don't want it to be stuck if the bundler integration is not available. React server side component support, regular style loading, a few breaking, as few breaking changes as possible, and still be able to use atomic classes later down the road once we nail the atomic, uh, the, the, the code splitting aspect of it. Now, if you look at performance, this is what we had before, and this is how it looks like once you compare it to Pigment CSS. So it's very close to CSS module, and the, the material UIV6 is what we expect as performance uh, comparing to the previous one. So as you can see, it's about two times faster than the previous version. So I'm pretty excited about this. Now, how does it work under the hood? So very quickly, it starts as a fork of Linaria that we have extracted the logic into what you want in GS, which is basically a way to share the, the effort into the bundle integration and it effectively transpiled to CSS modules files. And to finish the, the, the presentation, so when does this land? It's still in alpha at this stage. Some of us have already been experimenting with this, like Josh. Uh, but we're pretty much focused on making this available as an opt-in feature into Material UI v6, where in v6, because it hasn't been a new major ver version for three years now almost, has been mostly about uh, modernizing the stack, like for instance, of the updating browser supports and so on. So that's, that's about it for my talk, I think. So you can find the blog post that introduced this. And if I could like, leave you with only one note, would be what if we could make CSS loading tree shaking as important and as emphasized as we do it for JavaScript? I think that would be amazing. And if I could just transmit that knowledge and information like vision, that would be great. So please give it a try and see you next time. <laughs>